join us in our entrance. Hosanna. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Good afternoon and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. We celebrate today the fifth Sunday of Lent, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Gathering in the presence of the Lord, we acknowledge our humanity. We acknowledge that we're always in need of reconciliation. So we ponder and we pray. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christ eleison, Christ have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us be seated and be attentive to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us for the response to the song. the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. With the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. 
If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. With the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. With the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. With the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join us for the gospel acclamation. to you, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Glory you, Lord. O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while well, Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. 
Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man and his wife were strolling along in heaven, absolutely dumbfounded with the beauty, the peace, and the love that surrounded them. You know, said the husband, if we wouldn't have spent all that money enduring the, that pain at the gym, eating spinach, broccoli, and avocados, we could have been here 20 years sooner. So in less than two weeks, we will recall the death of Jesus. Today, we'll be confronted with the death of Lazarus. It seems like we're asked to think about something many would rather not, death, and ponder the question, Jesus, are you really there? You know, the death of Lazarus brings out some hidden anger and resentment that people feel about death. The usually pleasant Mary grumbled that Jesus, if Jesus would have been there, Lazarus would not have died. Martha went on, but even now, you can change things. One of the friends complained, why didn't Jesus stop death from happening? And we know exactly how they felt. Why did my mother die so young? Or why did my brother have to suffer so much just to die? Or why do we even have to die? Couldn't God have a better way of transitioning us from earth to heaven? But we don't complain too long or too loud because we're afraid of death and fear can turn to panic when it confronts us personally. That's why many of us get spooked by the COVID-19 virus. When the word death is heard in a room, people freeze, just like squirrels being watched. Death will never be easy, and no amount of rationalizing takes away the sting. The fear of death will never be overcome but it's made more bearable if we put our faith in Jesus. And so in response, let us look at some images that Jesus is indeed out there. We've all probably heard about the brilliant paintings of the great Dutch artist Renoir. They seem to be filled with life, light, and color. It's like he put light inside the people he painted. Oddly enough, the last 20 years of his life, his most productive years, I might add, Renoir was greatly crippled with arthritis. His, his hands were twisted, his wrists, his arms, his spine were ravaged by the disease. He couldn't even stand while he worked, so he had to sit as he painted, and he was often shifted around by assistants. Sometimes the pain was so severe that perspiration would drip from his head. One su on one such occasion, an assistant asked him why he tortured himself, and Renoir replied, the pain passes, 
but the beauty remains. And that's the promise we have and tie him and set him free after the ravages and sickness and death, the beauty of love and eternity remain. Another image to share is that of a celebrity of his time, Malcolm Muggeridge. He was a playboy, wit, and editor of the famous British publication called Punch Magazine. Much to the consternation of his cultured friends, Malcolm became a Christian inspired by the presence and work of Mother Teresa. Elderly, when he converted, he wrote some inspirational pieces, including these words. As I approach my end, I find Jesus' outrageous claim even more captivating and meaningful. Often, waking up in the night as the old do, I find myself to be half out of my body, hovering between life and death, with eternity rising in the distance. I see my ancient carcass prone between the sheets, stained and worn like a scrap of paper dropped in the gutter, and hovering over it, myself like a butterfly, released from its chrysalis stage and ready to fly away. Are caterpillars told of their impending resurrection, how in dying they will be transformed from poor earth crawlers into creatures of the air with exquisitely painted wings? If told, would they believe it? I imagine these wise old caterpillars shaking their heads. It can't be. It's a fantasy. Yet in the limbo between living and dying, as the night clocks tick remorselessly on, and the black sky implacably shows not one single scratch of gray, I hear these words, I am the resurrection, and I feel myself to be carried on a great tide of joy and peace. So faith asks the question, if caterpillars, why not us? And a final image coming from the world of stories by Catholic priest and author Bill Bausch. A long time ago lived a little boy whose parents had died. He was taken in by an aunt who raised him as her own. Now years later, after he had grown up and left, he received a letter from his aunt. She had a terminal illness, and from the tone of the letter, he knew she was afraid of death. The man wrote a reply, a letter in reply to which he said, It's now 35 years since I, a little boy of six, was left quite alone in the world. You sent word that you would give me a home and be a mother to me. I'll never forget the day I made the long journey of 10 miles to your house. I can still recall my disappointment when you sent Caesar, a dark man and a servant, to fetch me. I remember my tears and anxiety as perched high on your horse and clinging tight to Caesar, I rode off to my new home. Night fell before we finished the ride, and I became even more afraid. You think she'll be in bed when we get there? Oh no, replied Caesar, she'll be sure to stay up for you. And when we got out of the woods, when we get out of the woods, rather, you will see a light shining in the window. Presently, we did ride out into a clearing, and there was light. I remember you waiting by the door, and that you put your arms tight around me, a tired, frightened little boy. You had a fire burning in the hearth, a hot supper waiting. After supper, you took me to my new room. You heard me say my prayers and sat with me till I fell asleep. You probably realize why I'm trying to recall this to your, to your memory now. Very soon, God will be sending for you to take you to your new home. I'm trying to tell you that you needn't be afraid of the summons or the strange journey, because God can be trusted. He can be trusted to do as much for you as you did for me so many years ago. At the end of the road, you will find love and a welcome waiting for you, and you will be safe in God's care. I'm going to who watch and pray for you until you are out of sight. And I will wait for the day when I make the same journey myself and find you waiting for me. Notice the symbols in this story. 
Caesar, the dark figure, represents death. The light at the end of the journey is Jesus, the light for the world. The house is the many rooms in, in, in heaven that Jesus promised. The supper is the heavenly banquet. God is the loving aunt. It's a homecoming story. It's about hope and a promise. And maybe the question of Lazarus, as well as his sisters, was, Jesus, are you there? The good news is that he was and he is. And so we can stop imagining death as the end of life, like the body's too broke and it can't be fixed no more. Death is birth and entry into eternal life. Let us now make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's overwhelming mercy and compassion, we present our needs to him now. For the Church, that God will transform our fears into hope, selfishness into love, and deaths into new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have contracted the coronavirus, that God's healing spirit will ease their symptoms and restore them to health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire everyone working to curtail the virus, and help them to employ proper hygiene. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who must face death each day, particularly emergency personnel and hospital chaplains, that God will strengthen their spirits and help them honor the life of each person they assist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who confront the death-dealing forces of our society, that they may bring the light of Christ to those struggling with the darkness of abortion, abuse, addictions, violence, or disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are mourning the death of a loved one, that they may know Christ's loving and sustaining presence with them in their time of loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you raised Jesus from the dead to plan our salvation for all of us, to give your plan of salvation for all of us. Hear and answer these prayers and guide us to be people of mercy in this time so we may be truly compassionate to those in need, especially those who are struggling with the coronavirus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please join us in our offertory hymn, Jesus Loves Me. I was lost, I was in chains, the world had a hold of me. was a stone I was covered in shame when he came for me I couldn't run couldn't run from his presence I couldn't run couldn't run from his songs Jesus he loves me he loves me he is 
Jesus for me Jesus how can it be he loves me he is for me it was fire deep in my soul I'll never be the same Step out of the dark and into the light When he called my name I couldn't run, couldn't run from his presence I couldn't run, couldn't run from his songs Jesus, he loves me, he loves me He is for Can it be? He loves me. He is for me. And pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as the true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, save us. Oh, say. 
and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the clergy, and all who minister in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And gathering our prayers together now, we dare sing the prayer that Jesus taught us all. Our in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us all our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not. Graciously grant us peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope. And the coming of Jesus Christ For the kingdom, the power and glory Are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> Counselor, mighty God and Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, morning. 
star, King of kings and Lord of lords, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of all the world. You take away the sins of all the world, miserere and nobis. And stay, you take away the sins of all the world, no nobis marchen, no nobis marchen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be you. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us to new and everlasting life. Through the eyes of man it seems There's so much we have lost As we look down the road Where all the prodigals have walked and one by one the enemy has whispered lies and let them off as slaves. But, but we know that you are God, your sister victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with your faith you've given us We'll step into the valley unafraid yeah. We call out to tribals Come alive, come alive We call out to dead hearts Come alive, come alive Blood of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to tribals, come alive. We call out to tribals, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love. Rescue every daughter to bring us back the wayward sons. And by your spirit, breathe upon them. Show the world that you alone can save. You alone can save. We call out to tribes, come alive, come alive. Come alive, come alive A lot of the ashes Let us see an army rise We call out to dry boats Come alive We call out to dry boats Come alive Let us pray.
We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we may have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ to bring Christ to the world by his compassion and love. Thanks to you, Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Please join us in our recessional hymn this evening, Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. 